Delver. So we will take a look at the sideboards here. We'll see who's on the play here in just a moment as well. We've got a Notion Thief, two Flusterstorm, a Pithy Needle, a Thought Seize, two Nile Spell Bombs, 300 Torax, a Force of Will, a Liliana the Veil, two Disfigures, and two Golgari Charms here for Tyler. The guy loved Disfigure in this matchup. For sure, just more cheap removal things that, to keep his head above water. The, the places where Charlotte's Bug will get into trouble in this matchup is if the first two turns of the game get out of control. So stabilizing the board early is the recipe for winning this matchup. So all the cheap removal is good. What's on Greg's side? Two Disfigure, Felicity Storm, two Golgari Charm, two Graph Figures Cage, a Null Rod, a Thin Needle, a Spell Pierce, a Sylvan Library, two Thought Seize, an Umazaz Jitte, and a Vendalian Click. I like Sylvan Library, the two Thought Seizes, and the Vendalian Click a lot in this matchup. I feel like things here, is, and we said it just a moment ago, if it's a fair matchup, chances are I favor Shardless Bug. These decks are the same colors, they have a lot of the same cards and overlap, but Shardless Bug has Ancestral Visions where Bug Delver does not. Here's the, the, the best way to frame the matchup. Both players have access to Disfigure in the sideboard. We know for Tyler it's going to be a home run in this matchup. Kills Deathrite Shaman and Delver Secrets. On Greg's side of the table, Disfigure does kill things in Tyler's deck, but I don't know how much removal he can afford bringing into the deck where it's imperative that he's the faster deck. So there are issues like that in the matchup on Greg's side of the table. The upshot is he can get off to fast starts, especially those back by Wasteland, where Tyler may not be able to get any of his significant pieces into play. We've seen a lot of Louisville in this, this Open, you know? We yes. have our Tommy Graves, our Open Series winner. We have the Silver Creek GameShot.com shirt, which I believe is a Louisville institution. I believe it is as well. Louisville's got to represent, man. Yep. That's just how they do it. Let's see what happens here in game three between these two players. Again, Lytle had a great start yesterday with this very awesome to watch rug core deck. If you guys haven't seen the deck tech for that, you can definitely check that out on the StarCityGames.com coverage page for this event. Nick Miller sat down with him in the sideboard. Playing a more traditional deck now, though. It feels like for the deck he was playing yesterday, the aggressive red matchups, whether it be Rabble Red or Burn, are going to be really challenging. Seemed quite poor. But when he had the opportunity to do his thing, there was some really impressive stuff going on. A quick mulligan, it looks like, here from Greg, while Tyler's going to keep. Five of nine is where we are right now in our legacy tournament. A little ways to go here. And we'll see what actually happens. Again, legacy, a very slow moving format as far as change is concerned, though. Last week in the invitation, we did see a lot of Charlotte's Bug. It was one of the best performing decks of the weekend. We haven't seen a lot of combo in Legacy recently. I'm not sure if I classify Tom Ross's Infect deck as a combo deck. It's kind of in that space. It has a lot of parallels to Burn, where there's some matchups where you are kind of a creature and spell deck, and there's some matchups where you are essentially a combo deck. We'll say this. There's a lot more Infect in the room this weekend than we normally see. And you have to imagine that's due to the boss's performance with the deck over the past two invitationals. And Mueller's going to take a second mulligan here. In now, fact, is starting to get really popular. It is, definitely. Now, Bug Delver definitely capable of operating on a resource like game here. Yeah, but of course. We've seen Delver decks mulligan to five all the time and win. The problem is that I think this matchup, on the face of it, is not good for Greg. He needs to get a very specific set of draws cards in his opening hand and very early in the game to keep Tyler off of his powerful stuff. And that's very hard to cobble together on five cards. I think it's very unlikely that you'll see, you know, a Delver draw be good against Shardless Bug. You know, Delver flip it and give the beatdowns to protect it, as the Delver deck is so known for, because one of the removal spells is uncounterable in Abrupt Decay. It has changed the face of Legacy. For the better, I think. I think so, too. Cathar Chaman's like a little annoying. I have my personal beast with that card, but I'm actually a pretty big Abrupt Decay fan. Cheap permanence backed up by counter spells is already too much of what Legacy gameplay is about. So things that are powerful against that sort of thing, Legacy could use more of. Greg will start things up. He's going to sacrifice the Misty Rainforest. Down to 19 he goes, and he's got himself a Death Rite Shaman. Tyler will draw a card here. Let's see what land Greg wants to get. That'll probably influence Tyler's decision. And it is a blue source. Important because of a card like Daze. Yep. Now, so, I'm interested to see, is Tyler going to be a little more 
liberal about not playing around things here. Is he going to be willing to just open up on underground C, potentially risk a wasteland here because Greg's on five cards and he's kind of happy making those trades, whereas on a seven card hand, he would be a lot more conservative about the sequencing of his initial land drops. And Mike's going to start with the fetch. Here's a brainstorm. That's good to go. So Bayou, a brainstorm, and a stifle are the draws here. Mueller, of course, will have to put two cards back. And it looks like he has a fetch land among them. But not a lot in the way of, you know, forward progress here. More cantrips, some things to defend himself, a tomb soccer for possibly down the line, but. We're a long ways away from that guy. Yeah. Four of them in his deck, though. That's a lot of those guys. Excuse me, one tomb soccer, four tarm yeah. cards. Pardon me. There's a Misty. Tomb Stalker has given us a very important lesson about Delve that we would be, uh, it would behoove us to remember now that it's coming back in cons of Tarkir. These cards are on diminishing returns. The second Delve card you add to your deck, much worse than the first one. And getting one of those things bounced is a big pain too. Yeah. In fact, a little surprised to see Tomb Stalker in the deck post board. It seems like matches up really poorly against a variety of cards. It's on the slower side, you know, Lily on the Veil is an issue. Chase the Mind Sculptor, Baleful Strix. Oof, forgot about the old Strix. Oh, yeah, it's not good. Here's Disfigure. That one's going after old Death Rite. I suppose there's a higher priority on Greg cutting his counter spells from his deck, which he has a lot of, so if he only has so many cards to bring in, something like Tomb Soccer is better served than something like Force of Will, which is not really that well suited for this kind of matchup. There is the powerful Disfigure. Gets rid of the Death Rite Shaman. Healer will draw. Doesn't sacrifice the fetch land just yet. How long is he going to just hold up this stifle here? That's the question. You have to imagine Tyler's going to play around it to the best of his ability. But we've gotten out of the initial stages of the game, and this is where Tyler starts to flip the script a little bit. It sounds funny to say, you know, we're only on turn three, but that's the early stages. That's where the Delver decks like to prey on you. Rug Delver more so than Bug. But, you know, there is no Delver draw kind of incoming here. There's a Creeping Tar Pit. I'm always interested in spots like this where someone has a Stifle in hand and a Brainstorm, the ability to shuffle away. How long do you clutch it? When is the time to move past that point of the game? So it's a pretty big cost. You know, Greg's got nothing going on on the board here. and Time is not on his side. So the longer they sit here not Brainstorming, not putting something proactive in play is really dangerous. The upshot is he's trying to get Tyler's land. But if that doesn't happen soon, then I think that Greg has to give up on this. There's even a situation, right, where Tyler would just let that happen. Yeah. He can just finally make the decision of, okay, I can let this Verdant Catacombs go. And you can stifle it if you want to. I mean, given the way that Tyler's played the last couple of turns, it's clearly something on his radar. We don't know if we've seen it, if he's seen it thus far in the matchup, but he is playing as though it is a possibility at the least. And sacrifice the Verdant Catacombs, that got stifled. Now he'll play a Misty Rainforest and sacrifice that. We'll see what Landy wants to search up here. Going to go with the Bayou. So man is not an issue here for Lytle at all. We'll see what he wants to cast here with his three mana, assuming he has interest in casting a spell. Two mana. It's the Lurgoif. It is Tarmogoyf. And given the pacing of this game, Tyler trying his best to play around things like Days as well. It's just a slow game. He wants to render most of Greg's defensive cards useless, pick apart the couple of threats that Greg can add to the table, and win kind of at his leisure. We'll get our Tarmogoyf die out there to see exactly how big Tarmogoyf is at this point, so you guys can see at home. Looks like we have instant and land and a creature in the graveyard. So it looks to be a 3-4 at this point. Yep. No sorceries, no ponders just yet. There's a trap. I wonder if Greg is just contemplating going for Tomb Stalker this turn. He played his land pretty fast there, in spite of having a Brainstorm and a Fetch land, and would appear to be not that much need for a fourth land. 
And it's a brand store. Modern players, your round five carries are coming up currently. And they are also available on Twitter. Looks like Greg has found an abrupt K in this brainstorm, which gives him an answer to the Tarmac Boy. Yeah, that's a good start. Now that that's too pertinent here, because I don't think his ability to answer this Tarmac Boy is really going to be the thing that determines this game, but it's nice to have. See a wasteland picked up now, too, from Euler. That's yeah, time to sacrifice the Misty. Down 18 goes Greg. Well, his graveyard is definitely stocked enough to cast a Tomb Stalker here. Pretty risky, though. Well, he's on five cards. His hand allows him to do nothing else. Yeah, I guess. I guess he just has to. And kind of hope for the best. The odds it is good here are exceedingly low. Jace, Baleful Strix, Liliana the Veil. But no. you got to try to win with the cards you have. I don't even think Tyler. Tyler quickly untapped. It's almost like he doesn't really care that much. Tarmac goes to 2-3 now, no creatures in the bin. There's a Misty. Liliana, perhaps. Shardless Agent, okay. That's good to go. Let's see what we cascade into. Disfigure. Well, not great. Seen better. He will cast it. Put it into the graveyard. And just pass the turn back, of course. Tomb Stalker is a 3-3 after Disfigure is there. And Tarmac Wave is a 2-3, so no attacks to be had. Well, Greg's still playing. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible, right? Yeah. It is possible for Tyler to not find an answer, especially if Greg is able to find another creature that can stick. Yeah. Then he has insurance against the of the Veil. And at that point, you're looking at basically Baleful Strix and Chase. That's an attack for five. And Greg has an Abrupt Decay in his hand. He doesn't have to kill this Tarmac Wave. It's not very large, so he can keep... The Abrupt Decay in his hand is insurance against a Baleful Strix. There's a Ponder. And we got a game. Tarmogoyf, Spell Snare, Stifle. Stifle's actually pretty good against the ways that Tyler can kill that thing. Yep. Or at least, like, momentarily get it out of the way. Well, any Planeswalker that he plays, you know, that Tyler can play here, Greg can stifle the activation, untap, and kill it with mm -hmm. the Tomb Stalker. He has Abrupt Decay as insurance against a Baleful Strix. And so... He's, a, he's definitely ahead in the damage race right now. Tarmac Wave up to a 3-4 now as there's a Sorcery in the graveyard. There's a Pluto Delta. And then Sacrifice this, go down to 12. For a five-card hand with no initial pressure, you know, Greg's as competitive as he could realistically expect to be. Yeah, again, I, I agree with you that Tomb Stalker's not one of the best threats in this matchup. There are a lot of cards that can make it look very poor. Again, Baleful Strix, Jace the Mind Sculptor, bouncing it after you delve your entire graveyard, and Liliana the Veil. But if the plan is just, you know, to abrupt decay problematic creatures, that's not going to work on Tomb Stalker. Right. Here's three mana. This is another Charlotte's Agent. It's time to Cascade, or at least attempt. And it looks like he's moving in on a Stifle. Okay, so he's going to Stifle the Cascade. Now here's an attack for five. I don't love the stifle there. He does, he does open up a lot of the vulnerability to a Planeswalker. And there's not that many hits in the deck is the other factor here too. Now he's gonna fire off the Abrupt Decay too. So what he basically is doing, he's opening up the door to losing to a couple of cards now that I think he was actually safe against. Yeah, though it's possible that playing the game the way we initially said, he could just lose to losing the damage race. Yep. I Means three turns off. There's Tarmogoyf. That's not that long for this world. Don't get a great look at what Tyler drew. It looks like he drew a copy of Liliana. So he does not have enough mana to do everything he needs to do this turn, which is abrupt decay the Tarmogoyf and then play Liliana. But it does look like he will be abrupt to gain the Tarmogoyf now so that his Charlotte's agents can get into the red zone, which I think is appropriate. He's going to go down to six. Now, if he does have a land hiding out in his hand and we didn't get a great look at didn't have a great look at his hand, then obviously this works out great for Lytle. I do not believe he does. I also think this turn would have probably been played at a slightly faster pace, but we'll see momentarily. And Tarmogoyf attack you for four. 
has to turn back. Has Lily on hand. Mm -hmm. Has it just fade a draw step here. Didn't get a great look at Mueller's hand. I believe it is a spell snare. And for five, puts you to one. Pass the turn back. Tyler's going to quickly untap and draw a card. There's a swamp. Here's an attack. Here's Liliana. Let's see, Mueller's going to take a look at the spell snare. It's good. Get that thing out of here. Pass the turn back, and Mueller's now drawing dead. Yeah, he's dead on the way back. Yeah, and that's yep. going to do it. Tyler Lytle's going to win this match. Timely Liliana Vale was the draw, and he's going to beat Greg Mueller. Mueller made a heck of a game out of it on a multi of five, but Tyler Lytle, Grand Prix San Antonio champion, is going to win this match. He moves on to 4-1, and one, playing Charlotte's Bug. Yeah.